This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV to get a 15% discount on damage assessment, CE training, industry certifications, books, and tools at HagueEducation.com. Hey, what's up? Matt here with Adjuster TV, and I want to talk a little bit about how adjusters get paid. And specifically, what I'm talking about are independent adjusters, right? So. <clears throat> Super briefly, what an independent adjuster is and how it's different from uh, maybe a staff adjuster or a person that works at a carrier is that an independent adjuster is basically a kind of a freelance adjuster or a subcontractor or um, a temporary worker. There were kind of categories categorized into that sort of those sorts of buckets, uh, which means that we get paid a in a number of different ways, but the prime way that we do it, if we're an adjuster handling full claims, and when I say claims, what I'm talking about specifically are property claims. So homeowners losses, right? So fire damage to the house, hail damage to house, fence, detached garage, um, fire, hail, wind, water damage to commercial buildings, to farm and ranch buildings, to condos, any kind of a structure as well as personal property, right? So contents claims as well are covered under property, right? It's, we're different uh, in a lot of ways from auto adjusters or auto appraisers or workers comp or liability. Um, those are all kind of separate from what we do. If there's a fire and uh, there's damage to a property, then we'll go take pictures, measure, write a little, you know, a scope saying these all these things are damaged and then we'll plug it into our computer software, which will kick out uh, estimate total, and then that's what the insurance company pays on. But we don't work directly as an employee for the insurance companies, in, in this case, as independent adjusters. So what we do is, or what typically happens, especially with catastrophe claims, which is what my 20 years of experience was primarily catastrophe claims, and that is hailstorm hits St. Louis, Missouri, and a lot of different insurance companies have hail damage, but what happens is, is a just pick one of them, they will call and say to an independent third-party company, they'll say, hey, we just had a hailstorm in St. Louis, and we're estimating that we have X number of policies in that area that may have been affected, and we're anticipating this volume of claims, and we need extra adjusters, right? So the, and so the, then the third-party company that they contacted will then say, all right, well, so we, I guess we need 30 people or what, whatever the number is, right? And they'll start calling, they're going through their roster, calling to find those people, right? And then you get the call and they say, hey, we got a hailstorm in St. Louis for Acme Insurance Company. Do you wanna go, right? That's the, that's the phone call that you get as an independent adjuster. Um, you may work for multiple third-party companies, right? So you might get another call from another one that says, hey, this other insurance company has uh, some work in St. Louis. Do you want to go? And if you're already committed to this first one, you have to say, well, no, I can't. Right? So you only can really work for one at a time doing cat property claims. So the way we typically get paid sort of traditionally, and again, these days, and I would say even traditionally, there's, a, there's several different ways that we get paid. But the primary way is that we get, um, we get paid by the claim. Right, so we have an incentive, and then of course on top of that, we can also get, uh, in most cases, or in a lot of cases, especially traditionally, if you're handling the full claim, we can get a, what's, what really amounts to a commission on the claim, which is counterintuitive, which a lot of people, especially people who are, um, you know, seem to have, want to have an adversarial relationship with the insurance company. Um, and then of course, you know, the sort of society at large, the conventional wisdom is that the insurance company is like incentivizing us to, to not pay as much as we can on the claims. And, and the truth is, is that the opposite is true, right? So we get, the bigger the claim is, the bigger the percent, you know, the percentage stays the same, the bigger the claim is, the, the bigger the commission, right? That's how commission works. And that's basically how we get paid. There's, there's some variations, there's some other little finer details to it, but that's in a nutshell, how independent catastrophe property adjusters typically get paid. And that really the key thing to remember here is that we get paid um, by the claim, right? So we're incentivized to not only find all the damage, but also to close as many claims as possible. The final piece and the difference between us and we'll say, 
roof sales guys um, or other other folks that are sort of that can be, find themselves in the process is that I can't just as an independent property adjuster I can't just go to every single house and write just a gigantic number on my estimate because I'm like well I'm going to get a commission off this so I'm going to try to get as much as possible I have to write exactly what it should be right if the homeowner didn't have a contractor there to or you know if they, I'm sorry if they didn't have the uh, insurance company involved in the process and they were just like you know what we need to, to do this siding on this side of the house and they get three bids where does that kind of basically shake out right we're as, as independent adjusters or even as staff adjusters people on the property the claim side we're incentivized to say to write that amount right what it should be if if the, if the insurance company wasn't involved and that's the, really the whole point of insurance adjusters is that we are kind of cost control for the insurance company. We're trying to save money for the insurance company, but only in that they don't want to pay too much for claims. They want to pay the right amount, and that's why we are who we are, why we're trained the way we are, um, so on and so forth. So really what it boils down to is that you have uh, a commission which provides an incentive to find all the damage, because if you don't find the, the 13 foot long canvas awning has a bunch of holes from hail damage on the back side of the house. If you leave that off your estimate, that's th those are thousands of dollars for those, right? That could have gone on my, my total amount of my claim, which would have increased my commission, right? If I miss that, then I'm, I'm basically taking money out of my own paycheck, right? So it's counterintuitive. It's not something that you're gonna hear um, many people talk about and people in the, in the public at large, especially when you go to a homeowner's house, um, they have no idea that this is the case. One caveat I'll tell you as, as an independent adjuster for doing property claims, um, it's not important to be um, upfront about how you get paid. It's not anybody's business, honestly. The only time I would ever pull that out of my pocket and bring it up in a conversation is if I'm in a situation where I have somebody who's, and usually it's roof salespeople, God love you. I love you guys so much. Um, but sometimes you can, because you don't have the same oversight that we do, um, you can kind of run around and say whatever you think will make the homeowner be upset enough to where they will do, they'll be on your side, right? And so a lot of times what happens is, is that people will say, well, you know, the insurance, the insurance adjusters, you know, they're told not to pay for claims, right? That's illegal, first of all. And if, it, if that came out for even a second, it'd be all over the news, which if you look back over the news, especially over hurricanes, it comes up sometimes, right? Whether that's true or not, those are alleged situations. Um, that's the only time if it's if it comes down to the guy is just he's full blown telling lies, whether he knows that they, that they're lies or not, he believes them or he wants the homeowner to believe that I'm just there to save money for the insurance company. I get they'll even say I get paid more if I don't find damage or if I deny their claim or under, lowball their claim and I have to set the record straight. That's the only time it ever comes out. Um, I'm not leading with it, I'm not bringing it up, just if things get a little bit, you know, um, there's a little bit of a disagreement, it's not important, it's not coming up, right? We just work, we work through those things. It's only if somebody's telling blatant lies and I kind of have to set the record straight. So that's kind of the, 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 the short and fast version of how independent, uh, especially catastrophe property adjusters get paid in the future, um, I've got uh, more videos coming up where I talk specifically about component pay for so like fee schedule, um, specifically about hourly and if you should take hourly or not, um, specifically about time and expense or what we call T and E insurance, or I'm sorry, T and E um, uh, pay, how how we're paid, time, time and expense. Um, as well as day rates and, and other kind of more unique ways that we get paid. And then what each one of those roles would entail and where you might generally see those, which one, if any, is better, so on and so forth. So keep your eyes peeled for those. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.